The disease tuberculosis has been known since Vedic era, thousands and thousands years old. In the era of uh, Veda, this disease has been known in the name of Kshayro. Kshay is basically, in the English meaning of Kshay is decay. And uh, this has been characterized uh, by a disease having prolonged fever, weakness and decay of the body. And the treatment has been given in the, in the Ayurveda is, that, is, that has been described in the Ayurveda in the form of three components, the fresh air, good nutrition and good nursing care. Mm -hmm. And later on when Hippocrates, the father of medicine, described this disease tuberculosis, same description he gave in the form of thysis, Latin word thysis. And till 1994, the treatment for tuberculosis remained the same as described in Ayurveda in the form of sanatoria treatment. And the basic components against sanatoria treatment remain the three, the fresh air, good nutrition and good nursing care. Now in India, if you see the scenario of tuberculosis in India, roughly half of the population of tuber the Indian population is infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, I recently described as micro-terrorist because it is the only single causative microorganism in the flora and fauna which have largest number of the host. Around one third population of the world is infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis and if you think of Indian scenario, half of the population is infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis. And this mycobacterium tuberculosis is surviving after the discovery by Robert Koch in the year 1882 on the 24th March that is being celebrated as World TB Day. So it's still more than 100 years have gone and it's still we are not able to control tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Roughly 20% cases they belong to children population and they are called as children tuberculosis, childhood tuberculosis or primary tuberculosis. This childhood tuberculosis or primary tuberculosis is entirely different from post primary tuberculosis. This behaves differently in clinical presentation, in difficulty in diagnosis and managing it. Now, this main presentation of childhood tuberculosis are the lymph node tuberculosis number one, number two pleural tuberculosis, number three CNS tuberculosis in the form of tubercular meningitis, number four bone and joint tuberculosis, and other is the renal tuberculosis. So these are the four or five important forms of tuberculosis in children. The most important risk factor for tuberculosis, primary tuberculosis or childhood tuberculosis in India, it is the malnutrition, malnutrition and malnutrition. And one survey shows in India around 49% of children from 0 to 5 years of age, they are malnourished in this country. So that's why malnutrition is a single most strong risk factor for the development of tuberculosis. Because if you see the immunopathology of tuberculosis, Tuberculosis occurs basically the interaction of the disease, bur the, bi the bacterial burden, the mycobacterium tuberculosis load, and of course the body resistance. And body resistance or immunity is directly related with the nutrition. So it is basically nutrition which is more important in the development of disease of tuberculosis. The passive smoking or second hand smoking, that is also important factor uh, for the childhood tuberculosis. Actually after the, uh, the law which has become enforced now, it is very important that the indoor environment should be tobacco free, there should be a produce particulate material free, especially it becomes very important for children. Because uh, young children or uh, newborn children or infants, they pick up infections very fast. And uh, these particulate matters, especially from tobacco smoke along with other chemicals, they actually cause at least two to three times more probabilities of developing infection and also the latent tuberculosis getting converted into active tuberculosis. So this is high time when we have a law in our hand and we have all desires and ambition to stop and control tuberculosis and uh, try to ensure that the mortality from this, this disease is uh, reduced to as less as possible, the best will be zero. And this can be done easily by at least one contribution by the society, which can be influenced that uh, the indoor environment in the houses should be by all means should be absolutely tobacco free. Tobacco cessation has to be you know, achieved by the tobacco cessation clinics and once they are able to 
and it quit tobacco, then I'm sure the environment will become better and the incidence of tuberculosis and the mortality from this disease, especially in children, can, can be brought down to the ambitious zero. Children, they are going for the fast food. And the fast food culture is basically decreasing the body immunity of the children. And that's why we are seeing the tuberculosis, which is said to be previously, is a disease of poor people, the lower uh, economic strata of the society. Now, children from upper strata, the high uh, economic strata, lot of children coming with tuberculosis. Fast food culture producing a lot of free radical injury and this basically decreasing the body resistance, body immunity and that's why they are more vulnerable for developing tuberculosis. One infected patient of tuberculosis in a year causes creating new 10 to 15 cases per year mm. and if the situation over overcrowded the spread is more rampant. The first and foremost effective measure which can control, which can prevent tuberculosis in children that you have to treat the adult cases first. So all adult cases of tuberculosis should be rather must be treated effectively and priority should be given for those who are sputum, whose sputum they are positive for sputum for acid fast bacilli. So all positive cases they should be uh, treated effectively. So as earlier you will intervene on the, interve you know, on the treatment part of the adult tuberculosis of course the secondary outcome would be that you can control the childhood tuberculosis effectively. The children affected, affected from tuberculosis, they don't spread the disease to the adults. While vice versa occurs, the adults infected with tuberculosis, they infect the child. So there is only one way transmission from adults to children. The another is, of course, we have to improve the hygiene. We have to control the passive smoking. We have to uh, educate our children that they should not go for fast food culture. And the proper nutrition, the government of India uh, should uh, take uh, measures that this malnutrition should not exist in the society. And of course the, uh, the usual dictum is that when somebody goes to the hospital, the children are company. This should be stopped. The, the, uh, all hospitals, they should be instructed that whenever attendants they are coming, they should not uh, carry their children to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of studies have been conducted, even the biomass fuel exposure is also vulnerable for uh, risk factor for developing tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. So this practice of using biomass fuel in the rural area, this should also be banned and this should be replaced by some uh, effective measures. I want to share with very important information regarding tuberculosis that five minute exposure to the sunlight kills microvacuum tuberculosis, even the drug resistant bacilli. So sunlight exposure inside the house is a very important factor and ventilation is also. So ventilation and sunlight exposure, they are the two factors which should be maintained inside the house. And uh, in the hospitals, the every precaution should be taken in the form of very effective treatment, first thing. Second, the control of ventilation in the hospital wards, that the air, same air should not be circulated and the air, uh, air conditioning should not be done with the wards and proper ventilation and cross ventilation should be kept in mind. The wall should be like this, that windows should be open and proper light should be coming to this. This proper sputum is disposal should be done and uh, every patient should be instructed uh, to uh, keep the mouth uh, closed with the mask or something like this who are sputum probably be positive and the, the, whenever they talk somebody or whenever they cough, they should close their mouth with uh, some kind of cotton hanky or some mask. And I am against that uh, isolated preventive therapy. Uh, country where around 50% population is having microvacuum tuberculosis inside the host. So I don't think that uh, isonia did prophylaxis will work. Now BCG vaccination is a part and parcel of our universal immunization program of the country. And I think it should be continued because meta-analysis has been shown that BCG of course it cannot prevent the disease but definitely uh, the uh, meta-analysis has shown that it can reduce the uh, seriousness of the disease, it can reduce the mortality. So if at all vaccinated child develops tuberculosis, it won't be of serious type, it won't be lethal for him. So this vaccination should be go, go on. And we have to educate the society by media, by print media, by electronic media. When the ch children are neglected, they have got tuberculosis, they are not treated well, they develop cavity which, which actually gets ruptured and then you find that the air and the pus formation occurs in the cavity. And then this is diagnosed late 
and then only putting tube will not solve because the lungs become you know covered by thick pleura. So therefore, the aggravating factor will be poor immunity that is important. Nutritional you know disturbances or mal nutrition in children, which is quite common in our country, and uh, at the same time they reduce immunity because of the um, autoimmune disease processes, AIDS, and those and uh, such situations in unfortunate families. So these things have to be also looked into and uh, a better treatment and control so that the disease does not transform into impairment. And the scenario is entirely different because sputum for AFD, which is supposed to be the gold standard for the diagnosis of tuberculosis, does not work in the diagnosis of children. So this is the one difference. The second difference, the chest X-ray, it is hardly helpful. Usually, chest X-ray is misleading in children. What happens? Any shadow in the X-ray in India is considered as pulmonary tuberculosis. So that is not true. Even the calcified shadow, the Gons complex, the primary complex, it is also regarded as active pulmonary tuberculosis in India, and that's the usually wrong practice, misnomer practice. So we have to differentiate in India. We have to educate the doctor fraternity also, the public also, that primary complex is not primary tuberculosis or childhood tuberculosis. Primary complex is a simply end product of every primary infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis at the end of eight weeks of infection. So this is called primary complex and it is not minded, it is not primary tuberculosis. So there are a lot of confusion in our pediatric doctor's population also, general physician population also, family physician population also. The usual dictum is that whenever any report comes that arises Mantux positive, or the report of radiology that is primary complex usually considered as tuberculosis. And that's why the primary tuberculosis or childhood tuberculosis in our country is over-diagnosed. Sometimes we over-diagnose primary tuberculosis or childhood tuberculosis and we are missing some very important diagnosis. For example, we are diagnosing tuberculosis but it happens to be later on, rather confirmed later on, lymphoma, hmm. leukemia, anemia simple, simple non-reactive uh, lymphadenopathy or uh, reactive lymphadenopathy. So that's why uh, the, uh, we are over-diagnosing tuberculosis in children. There are only 10% lifetime risk for the development of tuberculosis if at all there is infection in child. So this should be This is uh, true in HIV negative. In HIV positive, the risk is 50 times more. Mm. So HIV positive children, they have 10% per year risk. Whether it is diabetes and obesity in the human immune virus infection or whether measles, whether chicken pox or viral disease or malnourished children, in any compromise, even diabetic patient also a type of immune compromised patient. So tubercular infection and tubercular infection mainly affect the immune compromised person. Diabetes is one of them. You cannot control tuberculosis if you are not able to control diabetes. And in, chil in children, usually the diabetes is type 1, diabetes is type 1 diabetes, that is insulin dependent diabetes. Mm. So they have to be put on the insulin. And uh, in this country, we are uh, requiring the more friendly uh, patient, the childhood friendly insulin preparations, and even some other uh, kind of uh, mm. formulations, so that patient, because in small children, they usually avoid the injections. Mm. So we have to, uh, as the diabetologist of India and world, they should also think of how to get rid of this injection problem with this child, children. Yeah. 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 in that mm -hmm. case, huh. and in childhood, uh, FNAC mm -hmm. are culture. Culture is uh, very slow growing. Uh, it will take uh, at least three to four months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, tuberculosis uh, can be diagnosed uh, by sputum in adults. Mm -hmm. and by a phenacine uh, in pediatrics group. And one test is also uh, documented nowadays, uh, it is very sensitive, uh, quantifiron gold uh, is used for making the diagnosis. It is very sensitive and very specific test, but it is limiting factor cost. having the cost. Okay. Uh, how expensive is it? Uh, this this test is about uh, 3500 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30
uh, acute pneumonia could not be misdiagnosed with tuberculosis because course is different. Tuberculosis having slow slow disease course, slow progression. But LRTI, lower in respiratory tract infection, is easily misdiagnosed with tuberculosis. I have seen one adult case having three courses of ATT not uh, responding to treatment, ultimately diagnosed as LRTI and successfully treated with just septran DS for 14 days uh, course. Uh, patient treated successfully. Primary tuberculosis होती है, तो उसमें symptom बहुत कम मिलते हैं. सिर्फ हमको predict करना पड़ता है कि इस बच्चे को ऐसा हो गया है सकता है नहीं तो आम तौर से हम लोग ये देखते हैं कि बच्चे को भूख ना लगना और बच्चा solitary बैठा रहे, environment से interact ना करे या बच्चों के साथ खेलता हो, घूमता ना हो और कमजोर हो, weight gain ना कर रहा हो, ऐसे बच्चों को फिर हम लोग investigate कराते हैं। तो इन्वेस्टिगेशन में एक सबसे बड़ी चीज़ है कि बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स करते हैं कि हाइलर सैडो अगर लंग्स में रेडियोलॉजिस्ट ने लिख दिया तो उसको मान लेते हैं कि प्राइमरी टू ऊपर से लेकिन ऐसा नहीं है 99 परसेंट केसेस में होता है कि हाइलर सैडो प्रोमिनेंट होती है वो आता है ट्रिपुलर और अगर ट्रिपुलर है भी तो जब तक सिम्टम ना हो जब तक उसमें फाइंडिंग्स ना हो कि हाँ बच्चा मेहनत हो रहा है या बच्चे में कमजोरी हो रही वेट गेन नहीं हो रहा है अगर इस तरह के सिम्टम लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट के सिम्टम ना हो तब तक प्राइमरी कॉम्प्लेक्स में ट्यूबोकुलर मेडिसिन नहीं देनी चाहिए और इसके जांच के लिए हम लोग भी एक्सरे कराते हैं वन टू टेस्ट कराते हैं इलिशा फॉर ट्यूबोकुलोसिस है पी है और गोल्ड टेस्ट है बहुत सारे टेस्ट आ गए हैं जिससे हम कन्फर्म कर सकते हैं कि हम ट्यूबोकुलोसिस बच्चे को हुई है या नहीं तो कन्फर्म करने से पहले हमें मतलब ए नहीं देना चाहिए बड़े बच्चे अगर हो जाते हैं चार पाँच साल के हुए हैं बड़े हैं जिनको सेकेंडरी ट्यूबोकुलोसिस होती है उसमें तो हमें एक्सरे में भी फाइंडिंग मिल जाती है साथ साथ उसमें कफ की भी हिस्ट्री मिल जाती है कैटेक्सिक होता है बच्चा लुक से लगता है कि हाँ इसको ट्यूबोकुलोसिस है तो उसमें डायग्नोसिस डायग्नोस करना थोड़ा आसान होता है और उनको डायग्नोस उनको भी डायग्नोसिस कंफर्म करने के लिए हमें सारे टेस्ट कराने पड़ते हैं जैसे पहले बता चुके हैं हम यही चाहते हैं कि जब भी किसी बच्चे को ए शुरू की जाए एंटी ट्यूबर प्रोडक्ट शुरू किया जाए तो पहले निश्चित रूप से कंफर्म कर लिया जाए कि उसको एंटी ट्यूबर प्रोसेस है या नहीं जस्ट वी नीड अ लॉट ऑफ न्यू डायग्नोस्टिक टूल फॉर स्पेशली एक्स्ट्रा फलवी ट्यूबर प्रोसेस एंड स्पेशली दी चाइल्ड हुड ट्यूबर प्रोसेस दे टूल्स लाइक पीसीआर टूल्स लाइक जीन एक्सपर्ट दे आर आई थिंक दी रियल फ्यूचर ऑफ डायग्नोजिंग चाइल्ड हुड ट्यूबर प्रोसेस एंड जेनेटिक बेस्ड टूल्स शुड बी यूज इन इंडिया ऑल दे आर कॉस्टली अफेयर and i think the more and more institutions more and more hospitals they should have so that any physician if he feels diagnostic dilemma they can refer for the molecular based diagnostic test for the diagnosis of childhood tuberculosis especially extra pulmonary tuberculosis many time coming uh, miss diagnosis uh, even one thing uh, again i have to say that uh, many child are treated primarily at quack level Okay. They are copied to qualified physician uh, to treat the tubercular. If any fever not resolving, they start a tubercular drug, ATT, uh, in not proper manner. Uh, for tuberculous uh, treatment, uh, there are some regimes, categorization. Uh, they are uh, treating without any category, without any dosing. So, tubercular resistance is emerging. Because there is no gold standard for the diagnosis, making diagnosis of the child uh, tuberculosis. I mean, I have to say about the child of tuberculosis, even all women are adult child tuberculosis as well as child of tuberculosis. Only uh, the gold standard, till date, the gold standard for the diagnosis of tuberculosis is the clinical sign symptoms, reversible find, BCG report, and uh, some heart in cases of. Um, uh, total you can see uh, some complete background. Uh, diagnosis is difficult. It's a dilemma most of the time. Because uh, 
one side, any shadow on the X-ray in India, it is not considered as pulmonary tuberculosis. It is not true for children. Uh, MDR-TB is basically iatrogenic problem. Most of the time, we are responsible for creating multi-drug resistance in the society. The doctors are responsible. If you are not educating the patient, and you cannot blame the patient, that patient has defaulted the time. It is basically your effective motivation which will increase the compliance and adherence to the treatment. So sometimes, yes, patient, patient is not fit. You see, patient don't know the consequences of defaulting the treatment. It is we, the doctor's community, which we have to educate the patient. We do have to regularly motivate the patient. We have to know, there is a number, this is the era of electronic, modern electronic. We should note down the email of the patient. We should note down the, uh, the mobile number of the patient. Mm -hmm. And one social worker must be employed in the hospital and private clinic also. That social worker should follow the patient that they should not default. We can prevent the drug resistance tuberculosis by increasing more and more compliance and adherence to the treatment. So that is the only way that we have to educate. We have to uh, um, educate the patient that these are the consequences of your defaulting the treatment. Uh, this is very alarming that now even we are seeing in India the extra pulmonary tuberculosis drug resistance. Of course, drug resistance is directly proportional to the number of bacilli in that organ. And uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis as it is harboring less number of bacilli. So problem of multi-drug resistance is less than extra pulmonary tuberculosis. But in near future, I can, I, can, uh, I can foresee that if we continue with the same trend of same practices of treating tuberculosis with the at the government level and at the personal level, private level, the, the near future will XP will see a lot of lot of extra pulmonary tuberculosis drug resistance cases also. For the treatment of uh, patients who develop pyomatholysis with destroyed lung, the important thing is basic problem is that the tuberculosis has to be controlled because if it is on one side, it can develop on the other side also. So therefore, the first thing is and primary thing is that the disease should be controlled. That is one. On the same time, the pus which has formed should be drained. This should be done by either aspirations or by putting an intercostal tube. Mm -hmm. And once we to give a good trial of the treatment, then in children it is possible that the lung may expand in early stages. But if it does not expand, then we will have to go ahead with surgery. And surgery can be open and thoracoscopic and endoscopic now because of the advancements. But uh, most of the time you find that the children are very well responding to the thoracoscopic treatment also. So therefore this becomes a better available treatment now for children. And this is how Empyma can treat it. The basic thing is nutrition, physical exercises and um, proper uh, antitubercular treatment for a proper time and on the same time some surgical procedure which is required according to the conditions of the child. Of childhood tuberculosis, I can see the one important challenge is the diagnosis. That's why we need more extra, uh, the more diagnostic tool, more uh, especially the molecular one. The second aspect is the uh, the dosing schedule of the children, because children usually go to the school, and usually you say that uh, you take the uh, empty stomach, uh, the uh, dose, and and usually in the children they are morning they are very much hurry. So what I do, the uh, a modification I have done, uh, and it's very useful and it's working. That, in spite of giving the morning dose, suppose child forget taking the daily dose, daily, uh, dose morning dose in the on an empty stomach. So it should not be considered that now the time has gone, so child should not take medicine. No, the same dose can be given in the night after two to three hours of dinner. Because after two to three hours of dinner, the stomach is empty. Mm. So practically it is the same situation. In the morning also empty, stomach is empty. After three hours of dinner also, the stomach is empty. So that same dose, if, if, if the child forgot in the morning due to hurry of schooling, school time, and so same dose can be uh, taken in the night, mm. three hours after dinner. This is one issue. Second issue the regarding the children treatment is, yes, we need some uh, syrup-based formulations. Mm. Uh, usually children they like the syrups so the uh, vanilla flavor the chocolate flavor uh, such kind of formulation should be prepared so that they can comply better in a better way